Morning. Not a breath of wind. Trees aren't moving at all. Not a cloud in the sky. We're going in there. Old Faithful is back. This seems to be the only 10 meter that we can get working. So we are using our battery, pumping it into the handler. From the tote, we can measure on the tote, we can measure on the digital readout, and we can measure on the readout on the straight shot to triple check that our rate is right. We are spraying the in crop wheat today. This wheat is big enough already. It's about in that four or five leaf stage. So spraying everything at home. I actually started yesterday, did over 700 acres yesterday. So this tank will finish this home section this morning. The wheat looks really good for how dry it has been over the last couple weeks. I haven't had any moisture, it's still hanging on. This is seeded into that um, canola regrowth stubble, so that's why the stubble looks so high, but the, the wheat should grow taller than it, I would hope, but it's still a lot to, uh, there's a lot to seed into. Take a closer look at this wheat. At the north end of this section is a touch bigger. It's a couple days older. It's still still a good still good timing to spray. A couple of volunteer canolas here coming. It's actually fairly clean right here. Here's a couple more. Um, there's also quite a bit of buckwheat in this field. None right here. They kind of come in patches. But yeah, just trying to target these weeds and uh, wild oats stuff like that. The wheat is down about an inch and a half, so it's rooted. It's rooted right in. It's it's a good depth because it's been so dry. It's still better. We're still better off than last year as of right now. We haven't had those plus 30, 35 days yet. Get in the light here. That root system starting to develop. That looks really good. Put them back. It's tough digging. Let's bend them back. It's not bad. Look at this. No moose today. Oh my goodness, can you see that? Go little guys, go. Oh no, they're all in the seed row. Oh jeez. Go that way. They're trying to get to the water. There's water right there. Go! I, I got, I'm scaring, I'm scaring them. I gotta, I'll leave, I'll leave. No, you're, oh, you're going the wrong way now. Oh jeez. Now we have the floater tires on during in-crop spraying because there's less compaction with that big tire rather than the skinny tire. So it basically just lays that wheat plant over and then the plant stands right back up. Now during fungicide timing in a 
about three, four weeks. If it rains, we will switch to those skinny tires because it makes less of a track and that track will stay there, the plants won't pop back up. And then during desiccation, we'll drive in those same fungicide tracks because those tracks are there and we don't want to make more tracks in the field. There's a little calf. There they go. Oh, that guy's small. That calf was barely bigger than those baby ducks or geese or I think they're ducks. They are starting to call for some thunder showers next couple days. And then Monday, 70% of 10 millimeters. It's trying. It's trying. We sure need sure need something hasn't rained since we broke down with the drill three weeks ago free satellite radio ran out I'm not paying for that a few sloughs on this field when we're seeding we have to go around them now they're all dried up we can spray right through it all now I got to clean up all these jugs and cases Now all these jugs that I use, I'll put them in this giant plastic bag so they'll be uh, recycled. So I gotta clean all these up. This is the third, third bag I'm on already. Then we'll take them all to town. Hey, get out of here! Hey! Once the birds get in here, it's hard to get them out. Hey! Hey! Out! 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 Hey! Hey! They'll eventually go out when we open up the big doors to move equipment around. We always scout our fields before we spray. You have to know what that crop stage is at and what you're spraying for, whether it be weeds, disease, or pests. So the pests are the one thing that I'm going to go look for right now. The flea beetles in canola. And they are bad this year. I've heard of guys getting wiped out. I haven't seen it too bad on our field, but I haven't checked in a few days. And it doesn't take long to wipe out a crop, even a day. And they can chew off the entire plant. They eat the cotyledons and the first leaves and even the uh, the stem and it'll chew they'll chew right through that so let's go look if we can find any there's some very minor damage here there's one guy right there just a little black beetle feeding on the canola he's eating the first leaves coming out Get out of there! Not bad chewing at all. Oh, there's a, oh, what the heck? There's three there. They're just sitting there eating. Either they're, maybe they just got here because there's not bad chewing at all. It's those white, white marks on the cotyledons. And you're allowed, or uh, you're allowed 25% um chewing on the leaves before you have to spray so anything past that you should spray an insecticide but you're allowed or up to up to that it should it should get through it and also the canola has a seed treatment that helps protect against flea beetles but it's so dry out that the canola isn't growing very fast because usually it will outgrow the flea beetles the plant will be too big and then and then it doesn't matter anymore but since it's growing so slowly, it's more susceptible. See like here there's there's a little bit of chewing, but that wouldn't be that wouldn't be close to 25%, maybe like five or ten. Hmm. Uh 
Ага. Canola is nice. And not bad germination here. Slow, it's growing so slowly though. That seed treatment will only last so long and that's why, that's why they're chewing here. I'm gonna go walk out a little bit farther. Okay, so this is what I was afraid of. This is a little bit different story here. That, that could be close to that 25%. Uh-huh. Yeah, there. 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 I think we might... They're on there. They must have just got here or something. Because I see a lot of them. But the chewing isn't too terrible yet, but they can do a lot of damage in a day. Look at that guy, oh man. Get out of there, you guys. So that was a canola plant. I just touched it and the leaves just, just broke right off. Here, it's fairly bad. But then you go two rows over and it's okay. So I'm not sure if it's, it's bad enough to spray yet. I might, I might have to get some chemical just in case have to check a couple other fields. They're there, but not too bad. Just a small sign. No, well, there's nothing here really, so that's good. Nice day at the lake, or the slough. A little bit worse towards the edges of the field. There's a guy chomping right there. Mm-hmm. I got tired of walking quite bad here as well. These guys are pretty much toast already. What the heck? It's like an all-you-can-eat buffet out here. It's two there. Where is there? One. Another one. Another one. Every, every plant. Every plant has a beetle on it. I think this one's going to be sprayed. Yep. It's starting to do too much damage and it won't, the plant won't outgrow it and the seed treatment isn't holding anymore or, or isn't working. So I think this one's going to be sprayed. There's a type of rebate with your seed treatment if you have to spray an insecticide for flea beetles. If, the, if it outgrew the seed treatment or didn't work, it's, it's discounted or free or something. So I'll have to check into it. It's, it's worth doing. If there's this much damage, it's worth spraying. I think maybe two fields are past that 25% threshold. There's a lot of chewing on all of them, but not enough damage to spray every field. So we might get that chemical ordered today yet. And then tomorrow, if it's calm, I'll get that sprayed. Those buggers. Well, thanks for watching everybody.